Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen and to the channel. Today we are going to be prepping for my birthday tomorrow. Yesterday was Rafa's birthday and my 11 year cancer free anniversary, which is great news on both fronts. Little Rafi Staffy turned one. Um, but tomorrow is my birthday, so Rafa and I are birthday buddies uh, and we are celebrating by having my best friend and his best friend over for dinner and she's coming with her kids and her husband so there's going to be six of us plus Rafa for dinner and we are going to be making something really easy that I, we've made before on the channel it is a lamb pull apart that you can put onto bread buns and turn into sliders and I just wanted something really easy because I was thinking about what do I actually feel like doing for my birthday I have never really thought about that before as crazy as that is and I don't want to cook so what I'm gonna do is cook today and make something that can be dealt with and put together at the last moment tomorrow and I don't want it to be anything fancy it has been one of those weeks as this channel always does I will update you that we have had copious amounts of rain the other day we had over 80 mils in a six hour period yeah so everything flooded again the tomatoes are looking a bit rough and it looks like the snow pea seedlings which I haven't planted yet have fungal diseases now so you know whatever but what that meant is that there was another mold explosion in this house this house is so damp and it meant that I have spent three days pulling apart this house and scrubbing everything with vinegar and kind of letting it all dry and then putting it back away and I've put as much as I possibly can in um, storage boxes or in vacuum seal bags to try and protect it from future La Nina rains but this house is not not the best from that perspective so I am a little bit tired and a little bit over it and I don't want to make a massive mess and then have to deal with that again but I do want to like I do want to do this let's let's do this birthday so let's get this started before we get going I just have to apologize you will probably hear some background noise the wind is absolutely howling around the house today and it did the same yesterday and because it's like the one sunny day of this year so far every human alive is mowing their lawn and hopefully I'll be one of them later I feel like a lot of my recipes the flavor base is very dependent on garlic and rosemary both of which I like I would like to branch out more but I don't really like spice and so I'm kind of nervous to freestyle with things like cumin and, and stuff like that so if you guys have any great recipes that might be a little bit out of my uh, comfort zone but that aren't spicy then do let me know in the comments below I'd really appreciate that a chance to try something a little bit different which if you're cooking for one person is very important because you do tend to just cook the same things over and over again you might be wondering why I'm cooking on my own birthday well there were a couple of options for things I could do for my birthday one of which was to drive three hours north to Sydney and go to my 20 year school reunion so I mean I'm already feeling old on my birthday I don't need to feel extra old and I just kind of feel like Birthdays can be a bit of a non-event anyway, but I don't really want to go through all that effort to potentially just have an awkward dinner with people I haven't seen for 20 years. The last reunion was very awkward and very poorly attended, so I just didn't really feel like doing that. I only moved down to the south coast two years ago in early 2021, not even two years ago, but um, that has kind of meant that my social group has changed but my social group was changing anyway because most of my friends are at that stage where they're not even getting married and having kids anymore they have kids and those kids take up huge amounts of their time and you know my life obviously seeing i'm celebrating 11 years cancer free didn't turn out the way i wanted it to and you know that has just meant that my weekends and life and everything looks a bit different so when I was talking to my best friend about what her plans were for this weekend they're crazy busy and she is just 
zooming around after the kids but um, they had nothing planned for tomorrow afternoon and I was like well come around for dinner and and I'll cook and she was like oh you don't have to cook I know I don't have to cook but I like cooking for my friends I like seeing my friends and COVID has made building a social group down here very difficult especially because like I'm on immunosuppressants so while it might be over for other people it's not over for me I still have to be careful um, but I have built the beginnings of a social group now but uh, those friends that I have down here some of them are overseas so it's just you know it's gonna be a small birthday and that's that's fine what I've got in here is uh, garlic a couple of tablespoons of oregano a couple of tablespoons of salt a tablespoon of pepper and I'm just gonna add diced rosemary and olive oil and then rub that all over my lamb and slow cooker it for a while I do add a little bit of um, red uh, red wine vinegar and a little bit of water in with it when I am slow cooking it and then when it is ready and is sort of falling apart easily to shredding uh, you pull it apart and then grill it for two minutes before adding it to a sandwich it is amazing especially when you kind of make roast potatoes and everything as well so that's what we're doing because it's a really really simple meal and it's a crowd pleaser and like I mean I, I might fiddle around with a cake I'm considering doing something but uh, yeah I, I, I want to keep things simple I was thinking I would like to um, spend some time in the garden tomorrow and I would like to go to a new farmers market and try that out I've been meaning to for the last few weeks but you know again the weather has been awful and I don't want to drive 50 minutes for a farmer's market that might be a bust because of the weather. So hopefully the rain stays away tomorrow and um, I get to spend a little bit of time outside. That would be really, really nice. I've got my herby garlicky mixture done, my water and red wine vinegar done and now all I need to do is open the lamb shoulder and rub the herb mixture all over it so basically this is a really simple meal it just needs enough time in the slow cooker and then a little bit of grilling at the other end and it's really really tasty and i'm looking forward to eating this tomorrow i'm also really glad that i did this today so that i'm not spending tomorrow like dealing with this and in a way it's kind of worked out really well <laughs> that we had that rainstorm and the house went moldy because um, the house is now clean and tidy and ready for visitors and uh, are any of you guys are adverse to the smell of raw meat it doesn't matter like obviously I can tell the difference between uh, meat that's gone bad and meat that hasn't but I just don't like the smell I just really ugh, it's not my cup of tea okay so I'm gonna pop this in the slow cooker now and then rub it down basically when I was dealing with the whole mold extravaganza I was really kind of thinking about you know how important it is to be prepared and like for want of a better term I'm sure people would call me a prepper or at least a wannabe prepper um, and I think I've always been kind of inclined to have more on hand than what you need for one person and a lot of that is because especially food wise I am very mood based so I will go to the supermarket intending to have a meal plan for the first time ever and I will buy all the things I need to make that mixture and then life happens and I never get to it or by the time I get to it I just don't feel like that anymore so uh, I do tend to have uh, a lot of stuff lying around that I could make some of my more preferred meals with on a regular basis this is actually doing a really nice coating of the lamb so this should taste really good so I try and get it into all the nooks and crannies but what I'd learnt from the first round of La Nina flooding was that this house has terrible gutter systems and that the landlord is not interested in dealing with those sorts of things and and basically that this house gets really damp like you can walk around and feel that the carpet is is damp 
And so I learned that it was really important to have things like firewood on standby. And if you guys remember from a previous video, recently I went to the golf course and got a whole stack of kindling and braved a spider in the car at night on the highway after picking up firewood from my parents' house. Well, that all came in very handy to dry the house out. And it was like I learned last time, you need to have vinegar on standby. And I did have some, but I didn't have enough last time when everything went. And I didn't have enough paper towels last time when everything went. And with paper towels, I try not to use them too much because it's kind of like a waste of um, paper and I don't like it from an environmental perspective. But when it comes to mold, I want to wipe that off and throw it away. I don't want the mold spores like in my washing machine if I've used a cloth or something like that. Last time I also learned that that's when everybody else goes to get moisture absorbers. So when I was going to get more because what I had was inadequate, people were just trying to get some and you couldn't get any for months afterwards. And so when they became available again, I had actually, um, I'm gonna put this on for seven hours, I think, and then I'll check it. Okay, that's done. Um, I, I had everything, I just didn't have enough of everything, and so I had stocked up in the meantime. And this time, I could just go and have everything perfect, and, well, perfect, and cleaned up really quickly. I didn't have to go to the shops when it was pouring rain to get more supplies to deal with this house. My, my concern with this house is obviously like, mold is a health problem and I have enough health problems, but also like Rafi really seems to be having trouble with an environmental allergen and I would suggest that it's probably this house. But uh, with the rental market being what it is and I don't wanna go back to Sydney, I think we're probably staying here and we just like, I'm getting better at managing this Last time I put a lot of things in plastic boxes also because then if I if I had to pack up a move in the next I would be moving in January so in the next two months then everything's pretty much ready to go but I hadn't done everything so now in my niece's bedroom all of her clothes are in vacuum bags everything is in, everything that I don't use on the regular is in vacuum bags or in plastic tubs to protect it from the mold and I got even more moisture absorbers and they're just they're everywhere. So hopefully going forward we'll be able to manage this a bit better. I'm a bit concerned about not being able to get enough firewood because everyone's saying they don't have firewood in spring. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm about as prepared as I can be. I still need to keep prepping for La Nina because it is clearly just a nightmare. We've got massive floods in Victoria today. People have been told that they need to be prepped to isolate for at least three or four days before uh, uh, authorities are going to be able to get to them. So I've been thinking this week that if I'm a prepper, it's served me well this year and there's a lot of things I still need to be working on to get better at this. But so far it's been a helpful quirk, shall we say. So the lamb is going to be doing its thing for another seven or eight hours. And then I just have to package it up and wait for tomorrow. In terms of prepping for my birthday, there's not really much else I can do. I really want to serve roasted silver beet because I have now become low grade obsessed with roasted silver beet. But there's nothing at the supermarket. I went out before and picked myself up a little Australian delicacy gay time ice cream because I figured it's my birthday, why not? Um, they didn't have any silver beet, but the trouble is my silver beet is a little bit little at this point. So I've been outside willing it to grow bigger by tomorrow. So hopefully that will eventuate into amazing silver beet by tomorrow. So it's got 24 hours. Um, and I think I'm going to do roast potatoes and I, I was going to harvest some of the lettuce that's been growing great guns because of all of the rain and make a, just a general salad and then try, I've heard that if you just sprinkle freeze dried blueberry on top of uh, a salad, it gives it like a really nice zing. And I bought powdered freeze dried, freeze dried powdered blueberries a while ago and I haven't used them yet. Um, and my freeze dryer arrives soon. So I think it'd be a great thing to try. And if it makes a salad more interesting, then that's great. So I'm gonna try that. 
And while I eat my ice cream, I am going to be thinking about my cake. Now I was thinking of a sponge cake and I was going to try and pipe different colored um, cake batter and then see if I could create some sort of, I don't know, lattice design. I think I've been watching too much Great British Bake Off, but oh well. But I'm going to have to do a bit of Googling and see what I feel like doing and see how much effort I feel like putting in. Because I because that is so easy to do, I found myself with some leftover time I wasn't expecting and it's not really outside weather, it is so windy outside. Uh, I'm hoping it'll die down a little bit so I can mow the lawn. But I do have to go back out to pick up Rafi's meds. I didn't do it this morning when I was out picking up the meat because I forgot I needed to go to the pharmacy and I bought myself an ice cream instead. And I didn't want my ice cream to melt while I walked 200 million miles to get to the pharmacy because all the parking around it has been ripped up. So, ice cream first, other problems later. So good. So good. Okay, so I've decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to just make a vanilla sponge, and this one is from Recipe Tin Eats. I have no idea if it's any good other than the ratings that are on it. And this actually has a sponge with buttercream icing. I do have buttercream in the freezer, but I don't want to use it because lately when I've made cakes, I've made this really amazing vanilla cake that I make that comes with this beautiful creamy uh, buttercream, but I just want something different. Last time I made that cake, I tried to turn it into a lavender cake. I had bought culinary lavender from Tasmania and I thought it would be powdered. It wasn't. I tried to powder it. It was impossible because as the blender kind of does its thing, the lavender just floats up. And so what you end up getting is like chunks of lavender in the cake and it wasn't nearly as exciting as I thought it was going to be. So I think I'm going to just make the vanilla sponge as is and then I'm, depending on how much it weighs, I'm going to divide it up into equal portions and, um, uh, oh, what's wrong, Raffi? And pipe, Raffi, what's wrong? And then, and then fill uh, piping bags and see if I can kind of um, pipe a rainbow or depends on many colors I decide to make um, pipe it uh, sort of so it's like a cross hatch um, throughout the cake and just see if it turns out like it doesn't really matter it's my cake if it doesn't turn out it doesn't turn out but I just thought it might be an interesting way to try and do the rainbow cake a little bit differently and then I thought I would kind of Victoria sponge style put um, whipped cream in between and on top but I'll do the whipped cream tomorrow, obviously. But then I thought this might be a great opportunity to use the um, freeze-dried blueberry that I have and sprinkle that in the um, cream. And I also got one pack of, um, what are they called? Blackberries at the supermarket, because that's all they had in two supermarkets. Um, so it is what it is. So I thought I would spread those how you would normally put your strawberries in a in a Victoria sponge because I like blackberries. So maybe like a blackberry blueberry rainbow cake. We'll see. These are the colors I have and these three are new. So I've got uh, neon bright pink, a Georgia peach, which I'm kind of liking the idea of, and this kind of coral one. But they're fairly similar colors on the top, but I thought I might go for like a non-standard rainbow because I mean rainbow cakes are all over the place and yeah they look amazing but I hate how the purple on the bottom always goes brown and I just feel like something a little different. I have a very vague idea of what colors I'm going to go for. I'm wanting to try those three new ones, which are almost basically the same color. So my concern is that they'll just blend into one. But I was thinking it might be cool to do like a pinky orange blends into purple. But then I don't know if that will look good with stripes. So I'm just going to start and sort it out when I get to that point because I'm just losing the will to be honest. Something I am going to do before this gets going is weigh the bowl and take a photo of it so I don't forget. 
Um, but that will allow me to tell how much is bowl and how much is batter and then work out roughly what an even divide is for the colours. I don't know if you guys use the eggshell membranes from your eggshells but they actually have loads of good stuff for your doggies in them full of collagen and other goodies. The eggshell membrane not only supports their joints but also their skin and their cardiovascular well-being and as you can see Rafi loves his. So not only can your dogs eat the shell membrane, but they can also eat a little bit of the shell. It has some good calcium in them, but you do have to be careful with how much you give them if they're pups because the calcium balance is really important for puppies, but the shell membrane is so good for them. These instructions, uh, I mean I hope this cake turns out to be good because these instructions seem unnecessarily complicated compared to any other sponge cake I've made before but whatever, we're doing this, let's just get it done. So now it says I need to stir that for five seconds. And then do it again. And how long for this time? Five to ten seconds or until just mixed in. Once you can't see the flour, stop straight away. Okay. Still a little bit there, but I have to scrape it off the side. I always feel like these kitchen aids are supposed to be so good, but so much rides up. Oh, left hand. And then it said it wants about a third of this mixture ladled in. So now that the milk, butter, oil and vanilla are combined, I have to pour them back into here, but apparently over 15 seconds. Very specific. Okay, so theoretically that is now done. I'm going to weigh the, the batter and kind of work out what colours I'm going to do. Okay, so <laughs> a very strange mix of colours. Alright, let's get these into the cake tins. So I know these weren't supposed to sit because then that flattens it, but that's the nature of the beast. I don't even know if this one's coral or Georgia peach, I suspect. With a bit more light, that is actually coral. So because the Georgia peach and the coral are like pretty much the same, I'm going to pop them on the bottom of each and I'm going to go half of each of these other colours on and it'll be a psychedelic birthday cake just cause. Looks so flat, I feel like all of this should go into one cake. Hand cramp, hand cramp. And this is why you should never make your own birthday cake. I was cleaning underneath it and the whole kitchen aid toppled over and flattened the button down. Oh, I can't believe I nearly broke this. Far out. And this is why you should never make your own birthday cake. I was cleaning underneath the KitchenAid and the whole thing toppled over to the side 
and it's bent the speed ugh, stick and I mean it still works thank god but far out oh my god the cakes are out of the oven I don't know how good they are they didn't really rise much but they look all right so it is what it is and I'm sure they'll be tasty because they're full of sugar anyway so and they'll be covered in cream so you know you can't really lose there so I am all done in the kitchen for the day I can't believe I nearly broke the kitchen aid and I kind of did break it I bent it but there is probably about 15 or 20 minutes left of sunlight so I am going to go out and mow the lawn quickly and then I'm free to enjoy tomorrow and do whatever I want so Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen again. I hope you found this video, I don't know. I hope you found this video entertaining in some capacity. Let me know below in the comments if you have a great cake recipe you think I should try so I can try and pipe the colors into the cake pan and get a different kind of rainbow cake going. I'll certainly give that a go. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye.